Hello, how are you guys? Awesome. Awesome, awesome great. Well, great to have you here today. Uh, our guest today is Colin Smith, aka Made Manifest. Christina, do you have something to say about this guy? Yeah, besides being our great friend, <laughs> he's he's running the lifting the veil page. Uh, Kulan, you are the investigator of ancient knowledge and researcher of etymology, the forgotten real meaning of the true languages, especially English language, what they really mean and what their conscious usage is. And uh, you are also the sharer of the syncretism science in order to awake this world from sleepfulness and to change this world to the better side. As far as we know, we are all on the verge of something. And he works along with such people like Gate of Gaia, Santos Bonacci, Bill Donahue, and many others. And Kulan was the inspiration for many people. And many people after him started to do their own investigations. And I don't know, maybe just... Um, Kulan, maybe you want to talk maybe more about yourself, introduce yourself in other words, because, you know, for listeners would be more interesting to know from your first view when all started and... You know, yeah, thanks for the uh, introduction. Um, I really don't have much to say about myself. Um, I just have an urge to constantly keep learning and constantly keep connecting the dots to things that we've always had questions for, how they've changed over time, how they've evolved, and therefore we can get a greater understanding of where that is taking us or where we can take ourselves through that understanding of the only way we can truly ever know where we're going is by knowing where we are. And by knowing where we are, we have to know where we've come from. And so not to think of this in a linear perspective, but to think of it as, you know, in a, in a cycle, in a cyclical perspective to where we've always known where we've come from. And somewhere along the way, the, the circle just, the circuit just got severed. So now we're working our way back to completing by tracing back our, our present back into the past. We can make that completion and complete the circuit, complete the, the cycle and be able to reconnect our future with our past so that we have a full understanding of history, a full mm -hmm. understanding of our story, not just his story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A full understanding of the now by combining these two. My name is Cullen Smith. This is Lifting the Veil. You can find all of my full books, presentations, videos, films, articles, posts at subscribestar.com slash lifting the veil. Patreon has suspended this work and my account and income stream for this content. So if you are a supporting patron, then please, I ask you to move your support over to subscribestar.com slash lifting the veil. And I have just established a completely free uncensored totally free speech social media platform that replaces facebook twitter youtube every other platform all in one on liftingtheveil.locals.com you can download the locals app and you can join our group and have totally free speech and totally uncensored unrestricted content access and um, there are, is also a ton of exclusive content, and I will leave the cited reference links in the description down below. So you can check that out for all of my full content. And awesome. Uh, you have brought out a video uh, a while ago about etymology and language that has received quite a few views on your YouTube channel. And that has helped a lot of people uh, waking up to the reality that we're that, that we're living in and continues to do so. Um, I see on that thread, uh, people are still commenting on it. it. It's still reaching people, which is awesome. And it just brings me to, to this wonderful invention of the internet, uh, where we now have the possibility, uh, to connect each other that way. And it's not only connecting at all instantly, but you know, like, uh, Terrence McKenna said, it's really making our collective unconscious conscious and it's bringing out our most personal dreams um, and our most precious private mind images 
out of our imagination and onto the net, onto this round table that we're sitting on, that everybody can access freely, still. Um, and it's really showing each other the inside of our heads in a way it's never been possible before. At least we don't quite remember just yet <laughs> how that mm -hmm. was possible maybe in the past. And another thing um, that I like uh, that McKenna said, you know, our culture cannot evolve faster than its language evolves. So by taking this apart, we're making big leaps here. Um, and it's really important to, to understand and kind of comprehend that, you know, if the language is controlled by, let's say, a consortium of some sort, an institution that decides, you know, whether something is correct language or spelled right or wrong or is the long, wrong language, then this very consortium is deciding about the evolution of humankind. And that's a biggie to wrap your head around. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, like like the web the Webster's authorized dictionary. It's it's not it's not it's not just open source. I mean, this shit ain't open source. You have to be, you know, you have to have tenure. You have to have you have to have proved yourself loyal to the institutions in order to gain tenure. So in order to produce you have to accept these authorized versions of his story, right? not not the full open source version where everyone has valid access and and their own unique pieces and their own unique history that maybe occurred differently than the way it's always been told. But but there's someone that authorizes whether the history is true or not, and it doesn't always fall into line with the evidentiary fact of what is. I was thinking about um, when we first uh, first got on and first got on and said hello. You know, it, it makes me think of you know al the word aloha, the greeting aloha, and you know the is it shares you know it, it's an anagram of, of of you know in other cultures you you say hello you know hello mm -hmm. hey halo yeah you know that's wa waving waving hello to the sunrise you know a morning greeting. And so, you know, like Aloha is just an anagram of that. Yeah. So I mean, it, it shows how like these words are all are all linked, you know, whether they're directly linked by definition or by, you know, etymology, they're they're linked in some way or another, even if it's completely jumbled up. Right. Mm -hmm. The Spanish hola or even ole. Yeah. Same thing. Yes. Those connections. Um become more and more visible and with the help of, of the phonics we can bridge gaps that have been you know ripped down purposely it seems yes. maybe just uh Kulan want to talk about the history of the etymology of the language for example to start from the power of babel the insights history how everything started and what that uh, biblical story really means without any, you know, the, the facts that we know from our mainstream media. Mm. Yeah, I think that that might be a story, and I'll give the, give the word to you, Colin, in a second, because I know you wanted to talk about the uh, differences there between the SO and XO etymologies, uh, and that might just be where it 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 you know the Babel's the Babel story may just be where it went from esoteric to exoteric etymology, and mm -hmm. uh, what do you have to say, Colin, about the differences between the two? Now let's dive into the word esoteric and how we can apply it in order to gain wisdom and understanding. Esoteric comes from Greek esoterikos, belonging to an inner circle from esotero, meaning within, comparative adverb of eso, meaning within, related to is, meaning into, or the prefix en, on, meaning in. To understand further, see the etymology of the prefix en, or on. 
In English, originally Pythagorean doctrines, according to Lucian, the division of teachings into exoteric and esoteric originated with Aristotle. So, in other words, the eso and the exo could be likened to a donut, wherein the eso would be the donut whole, which is consumed far less frequently than the exo, which is the outer ring likened to the rings of Saturn, who is also known as Lord of the Rings, which is consumed gluttonously en masse by the ignorant masses. So the esoteric understanding is the inner house of true wisdom, while the exoteric is the outer shell of false facades, fake masks, lies, and bullshit fed to the masses who are excluded, excommunicated, or exiled from the truth of the inner wisdom of the wise dome, of the inner temple, because they're too busy beating around the bush from being fed bullshit by mainstream institutions. So the ESO prefix is the same as the EN prefix, meaning within, as in endothermic or endocrine, as in the truth lies within you, as opposed to the hex of the X, which is the outer, as in exothermic or exoskeleton, or in other words, the false bullshit of the savior figure that lies outside of you, up in the clouds somewhere. But yeah, so the exo refers to the outer, the eso refers to the inner, and of course it all relates to to the torus. It all re it all goes back to vortex space mathematics and the torus structure of infinity and how you know there's the inner circle which is the inner realm of spirits, the realm of spirit in vortex mathematics it's it's the triangle of the 369 axis mm. of of the symbol in vortex mathematics and that's the realm of spirit outside of the physical matter of time which so that's the inner portion of the torus and the outer portion is the outer ring it's <clears throat> or you can also think of it as the symbol of the circumpunct which is the the point it's the dot with the circle around it um it's called the circumpunct or which is also the symbol of the sun, and it's also a symbol of Saturn, which, of course, Saturn is a, a, a circle with surrounded by rings, by a, a larger outer circle. So mm -hmm. there's the inner, and then there's the, exo, the, the outer, which is the exo, mm -hmm. is the rings, you know, as in ring around the rosy. You know, that's the exoteric. It's ringing, it's constantly beating around the bush <laughs> of the truth. The truth high, lies within. And the EXO is the false outer program. It's the false savior program running, you know, outside of us somewhere, existing, you know, either in heaven or in hell, rather than they are all contained within us. Truth is found within, which is the ESO. It's the esoteric, the inner house of true wisdom, the inner house of, of the temple, which the temple, you know, the temple, um, you will not find him in a temple made of brick or stone. Mm. Or Earth, you know, the temple is made. The temple is within our mind. The te it's the temple in our in our head, the temporal lobe. And which it, that's is, from the Book of Matthew, isn't it? That has been taken out of the Bible. Uh, Turn over a stone, pick up a piece of wood, and I'll be there. That's what Jesus said. You know, you're not going to find me in 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 houses and and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, Circumpunct. You know, the German word for dot is punkt. So that is that where that comes from. Yeah. That's, oh, the, awesome. that's the dot in a circle, the punkt. Um, and then obviously the circum is the, the circle, the, the circe, yeah. the circumference, the circumcision, or the cutting of the circumference. The scission being the cutting, as in decision, meaning to, to cut down. It essentially means to split apart, D size, as opposed to incision means to cut into. So the scission or the circum being the circular cut, 
is talking about the zodiac, the, the, the cuts of the zodiac wheel, the diagonal, the cutting right. and, the, and the slicing and the dicing of the zodiac into many different houses. Right, and what do we get when we cut the circle on our birthday? Everybody gets a piece of pie. The piece, yeah, the piece of, yeah. <laughs> and, of course, and of course, the cake, that ritual, that fertility ritual of the birthday cake and consuming the birthday cake. Well, let's look at the, edi let's look up the etymology of, of let's see, either, I know it's placenta um, is also the cake. Let's see. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know Jesus came out of Bethlehem, and Beth Bethany is the is the house, and also the bread, where yeah. we're close to the cake there. Yep, exactly. Yeah, it's it's the Beth is is the house, and so Bethlehem means house of bread. And when you think, well, house of bread, well, <clears throat> that brings us back to placenta, which the word placenta comes from modern Latin placenta uterina, meaning uterine cake, from Latin placenta, which was a cake, a flat cake, mm -hmm. which is why, you know, I, I'm not too familiar with, um, there's this new understanding of we're supposed to eat the placenta because it's got what, all these, I don't know much, I haven't heard, studied much into this, but I've heard it. A lot um, of animals do. Um, yeah, some, eat the placenta, some, and I hear some mothers, young young mothers, uh, do it right after the birth too, because of that. Uh, but just um, as a confirmation of that, in German, uh, we call the placenta Mutterkuchen, which means mother cake. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so that's why we eat the birthday cake, and and especially now in like some of the some of the um, New, uh, like a new, uh, what, like alternative new, um, information movement, like I've, I've been hearing about, you know, where women are supposed to eat the placenta because it's got all these minerals, nutrients, um, <clears throat> some kind of, some kind of uh, bond that it, you know, that it connects, that we're supposed to um, maintain that bond and the whole, <clears throat> the whole disruption of our natural cycles is you know how like the hospital will keep the placenta and they will have that on record mm -hmm. they will use that. they will forever have that dna stored on record they so mm -hmm. essentially they have your your most sacred your womb you know that we were gestated in that we were created from they keep that and and um <clears throat> you know they have that on file they have the dna on file from that point but so that's so you know that's why we eat the birthday cake, which is essentially and you know related to you know eating the placenta, which comes which you know which is eating. It's like you know it's it's why they have all these rituals of like you know on the cover of the Beatles they have the the diced up babies on their yeah. album cover mm -hmm. that got moved because I mean that's why it all has to do and that's why in New Orleans in on um, Mardi Gras. They have they have these the king's cake, which is the color of purple, green, and yellow, which are like they're the colors of they're like the the royal jester colors. Mm -hmm. You know the purple, the green, and the yellow. The green fertility of spring. The purple is the red and the blue combining um, into the, like the Christ conscious, the unification of the two halves to become the whole. And uh, and then you have the yellow, which is you know the sun. But so anyways, inside the, the king's cake, you if you get the right piece, there's a little plastic baby on the hidden on the inside. And if you it's kind of like a it's like a prize. If you find the baby in the cake, then I, I forget what you get for for, you know, finding the baby. But yeah, the, I mean, it just shows you that the, the cake is the baby. It's mm -hmm. it's it's a it's a it's a it's in basically a cannibalistic ritual, but not entirely mm. because I mean, the tradition of eating the placenta is, is something that's inherent in nature. And now on top of that, we're blowing out the candles. Yes, yes, yes. It's bapt baptizing of the, of the fire, right? It's yeah. like, as I see the birthday cake, it's just like a circle, like the zodiac circle. And you know, when the whole year passed and you are celebrating your birthday, you know, it means that sun traveled the whole circle and you know came back to that place. And you are lighting the candles with baptism of the of the fire, 
and then again you are slicing that cake to the to the some amount of the of the parts like zodiac signs and you just you know marking that day and again after that baptism of fire you again are falling again new year of your of your of your life yeah it's it's like the um <clears throat> you know the candle is is the is the sacred flame it's the keeping of the sacred flame the spirit you know with this yeah, the spirit, which is why you know, in in like the Olympics, you ha you have to keep, and in masonry, they had they they keep the torch lit, they keep the flame, mm -hmm. the the sacred fire burning, mm -hmm. and obviously, you know, that's the spirit. It's you know, the spirit is, is, yep. you know, it's it's the flame. It's, it's the, the spark it's of the light. burning light. It's the flame. Uh, just think of the Elton John song when Diana died. You know, your candle burned out wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah yeah same symbolicism there yeah and what were we talking about the flame going out earlier the flame going out earlier we were talking about the spirit and how the spirit um uh, uh, uh has also to do with the word of separation where where the spirit uh separates you know from the from the physical, you're now in the cervical physical by yourself somewhat, and have to have to find your spirit again, so to speak. Um, and that separation, um, if we split open that word, uh, we were talking about the um, the Pink Floyd cover there, where yeah. the light goes through the prism and fans open into seven uh, angles of light. Seven, seven rays. Seven rays of light. Separate. Separate. Seven rays. Seven rays. We have Ra in there, and we have the Sip, uh, uh, seven. And... Um, That's perfect. Separate. Right. <laughs> th those uh, seven lights, those seven different rays, and the seven lights uh, are also the seven arch archangels, the seven angles you can look at things the seven planets of seven the inner planets mm -hmm. of the visible spectra visible realms you know visible to the naked eyes is up to seven seven mm -hmm. chakras yep you know the green chart you were talking about the uh, purple green and yellow and if you look where they're located in the body uh you know the purple above the head the crown we have the um, which, which is why purple is a royal color. The roy the Tyrian purple, the mm -hmm. royal color of Phoenicia. Right, the green is in the heart, and the the, um, the yellow is in the belly. So that that shows right there the this the spirit going into you know through the heart into the belly. Spirit into matter. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that color of purple, we were talking about that the other day. There was something else. They made that from some sort of uh, rare animal that is only there, right? Yeah, the, the sh it's a, a mollusk, a type of... A snail. A ty yeah, a type of snail. And it produces this purple dye that's, yeah, it's only found in that area. And it's really hard. It's, re it's a really rare commodity to come by. So that's why... It's a royal color because only the royal elites could afford, you know, to to <clears throat> to get this could acquire this dye. And again, that <clears throat> that goes back to the royal um, color, wh which is why it's I mean, which is why um, obviously it's it relates to the crown chakra because it's that's why it's the royal color oh. of, of ancient Phoenicia. Right. And, and Roy is the king. Yeah, Roy L, which L was was the was god the god king. of of Phoenicia, the god king, the Roy L. But yeah, that that goes back to the I mean the Phoenicians were the purple people. So this is where we get <clears throat> today we get the the one-eyed, one-horned flying purple people eater because I mean obviously the the flying, you know, the flying aspect comes from the winged the winged god, the winged bull of heaven from ancient Mesopotamia, who you know flew flew around, which is why Red Bull gives us wings. But 
but yeah, so the purple is the com- combination of red and blue, the, the red and the blue pill mm-hmm. taken together to get the purple or right. the two halves of the season, which in, um, back, back to vortex based mathematics, I mean, in the yin yang symbol, there is the yin and the yang, which one is day, one is night, one is summer, one is winter. And in but the line that separates the two is, you know, th- you, we can see this in the Pepsi logo. It's that line, which in between the red and the in the and the blue in astrotheology makes the purple. That line in between is the mixing. It's the purple. It's that unified balance between the two. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Nice. That purple, because it was so rare, uh, couldn't make it everywhere where there were kings. So then the kings, especially of uh, Europe, we know those red capes that the that the kings then had. They went to red as the royal color. Mm-hmm. And if you if you look now, uh, yes, and the fairies had the color of blue. So. The, the female color was actually blue and the male color was red and they turned it on uh, around on us. You know, we dress the boys mm-hmm. in blue and the girls in red and pink. Lady in red. <laughs> yep. with me. Lady in red. Exactly. It's all upside down and twisted. And were you, uh, were you paying attention, Neo, or were you distracted by the woman in the red dress? Mm. <laughs> Definitely distracted. <laughs> yeah, by the by the whore of Babylon. It's so hopelessly dependent on the system that they will fight to protect it. Were you listening to me, Neo? Or were you looking at the woman in the red dress? I was... Look again. Who is it? <laughs> That's the truth. Uh, didn't did I uh, looked at the truth anagrams the other day again, and um, truth hurts through earth. Um, truth hurts is an anagram in itself. Um, you can then make through. You can make the name Ruth, and you can make U uh, R T H Earth, which is the goddess of fate. A giantess who personified the past. Now that's kind of interesting if you look at truth and earth, that goddess. 
and we just uh, realized um, we talked briefly before that there was a god or goddess for everything. Yeah, right? and how that has been uh, hacked apart and and try to make us believe in you know one one god, the 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 omni one, you know. Yeah. Right. And the whole history of the Europe was like the most peaceful time and the most time when the all arts, you know, prospered and we started to evolve in our society was uh, by the cult of Venus. When, you know, even today in Europe, we find many sculptures of Venus, you know, that very round, very fertile image of Venus. It was happening in that same time when we are finding the paintings in the in the caves and etc so it just shows that during that time when you know people were worshiping that female aspect that venus but we didn't have many wars and we had many time for arts for investigation of the language during those times language evolved and everything started and after then when wars came and when the men with all their you know energy which is sometimes malefic and sometimes good it's just like in all spheres we have duality Everything shifted and changed again, and again consciousness shifted. So it just shows yeah. how, yeah. Interesting that you say Europe, because Europa was also a goddess, was the Cretan yes. goddess who was adopted into uh, the Greek myth um, mm -hmm. as a virgin Phoenician princess, abducted by Zeus yeah. in the form of a bull, raped of by him, bull. right? The bull god, which is uh, the creator, which is nothing else but the Cretan bull, the Cretan Taurus, creator. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. And um, and then Europa, who was abducted by Zeus, which um, the word uh, abduct and also is, is a, the word abduct is the same as is, is linked to the word rapture because the word rapture shares etymol etymological roots with with rape and and um you know and and app, app because the rape is is the taking away by by force it's it's the um it's the abduction mm -hmm. it's so it, that's that's what a rapture is it's it's the taking away it's hmm. took it's, away uh, the virginity off europa by exactly. raping her yep and then I'm not too I'm not too honed on my mythology, but um, <clears throat> but I believe then I believe that union gave rise to um, uh, Pro Proserpina, I believe. Um, who wait? Who who was it that that it gave birth to the Minotaur? Um, after that, and yeah, 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 I, I believe so because or no, 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 no. Yeah, my mythology is mixed up. In order to to ha to appease the bull to appease uh, who was it I, who was it zeus or i, I don't know but who, in the form in the form of a bull and she ended up giving birth after that to the minotaur mm -hmm. which is you know the the mine the minor taurus the you know it's the minotaur which gives us you know the the taurus can be found in the labyrinth mm -hmm. which is the the labyrinth comes from the labia and the labia minora, the labia minora is, you know, is the minotaur and the minotaur because the Taurus is and the, the minotaur holds the axe, the dual headed axe, which is called the lab, the labrys, which is the two because it's the two. It's a double headed axe. So they're the two lips. It's which is why it's a labia, mm -hmm. which is where we find the minotaur in the labyrinth of the labia. From of the Minotaur. I mean, it's it's these these bull fertility and uh, and astrological symbols all go together, and it, and it all comes from anatomy. It all comes from physiology. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's as above, so below. What is above is mapped out right. also yes. in the body. And I mean, and also, we start, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. The world of Minotaurs, and don't you see here the moon, for example, the the phonetics of the moon. Monotaurus. Well. Exactly. Yeah, men, men coming from the Egyptian fertility moon god, men, M-I-N, mm -hmm. which is, and you know, I've got my article um, that I'm looking at right here, this one post that I did about 
you know, I, it's called Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. And we were just talking about the cult of Venus and um, Venus's influence in, uh, in mythology as well as in tip everyday things like the days of the week. And, and I mean, the, the, the Venus symbolism, the goddess symbolism is everywhere. And also Venus was the morning, is, is the morning star or the evening star, which is also, if you look at the word Lucifer is also the morning or the, the morning star. It's the first light of the day, mm -hmm. which is, <clears throat> and so, so I, what I've, what I've got out here is <clears throat> Obviously, the word, the root word M O N, Mon, comes from the moon, and it also means singular, as in monopoly, mon, monopoly, or monotheism, or monarch, mon, mon arch, which is the arch of the arc of the moon, and it's moon worship. And so, this is why we have Monday, which is the day of the moon. It's Moon's Day, just as Sun's Day is Sun's Day. And Saturday is Saturn's day, which is the Satyr's day, and which is <clears throat> shares roots with also, which is why it's the Black Sabbath because Saturn's color was black, and Saturn's day is is the Sabbath, which is why it's a Black Sabbath, and so <clears throat> this is where we get words like monster because monster is the moon star. Yep, stir meaning star is the feminine, so this is why we have words like monastery which means lone it literally means lone star so it's the talking about the one star which is why we have an asterisk mm -hmm. which is the little star symbol the little star symbol which is the asterisk it's the lone star mm -hmm. and that's the very symbol of <clears throat> these ancient deities such as zoroaster which because which means morning star or the dawn star just as in Slavic, the name Zorin or Zoro or Zora meaning dawn. <clears throat> so, which is the same as Lucifer, which literally the word itself, not this religious mind control program of what this concept means in people's minds. The word Lucifer means light bearer, which comes from the Latin roots of Lucius and Lucier and Lux and Lumen, which all mean light. Yes. Or light so lucifer is is lucius plus the prefix of fair fere f-e-r-r-e fere fair so lucy fair means to carry to carry the light to bring fere means to carry to bring to bear so lucifer means light bearer and it also means morning star which is venus who is also the morning or evening star mm. and which gives us modern names Modern names come from Lucy, meaning like Lucy, the name Lucy, who <clears throat> who twinkle, twinkle, little star, like a diamond, diamond in the sky, which is also Lucy in the sky with diamonds. So shine on, you crazy diamond, because mm -hmm. it's all talking about the light and the morning and the morning the first light of, of the day, the, the morning star, which is, and all the, and you, we have to see the symbols for all of these, because yeah, if sure. you look, I, I found that if you do a Google search for, um, let's see, for what is it? The crescent moon and star, you will get all of these logos, these symbols for all these, um, different countries, all of their, especially yeah. in Islam, Islam, you have the symbol of the crescent moon, which is the bullhorns, the create, the creator, the, the Cretan bull, the, yeah. the bull horns of the moon in that phase, which the is religion of the moon. Yep. Exactly. So it's all moon worship and which is why they worship, which is why they worship Lucifer because they're not worshiping some devil. They're worshiping the, the, the moon and the, the, they're worshiping the crescent moon and Venus. It comes from all comes from the cult of Venus, the Venus worship, which yep. is the, which is goddess. You see the people will think this is a, that it's some kind of patriarchal religion. No, it's it's worship of the goddess. It all comes from this goddess worship. Correct. That's why uh, Friday is followed by Saturn's day, and Friday is uh, comes from uh, Venus, um, which is, is Venus Day, Friday. Mm -hmm. So we got Venus followed by Saturn right there. 
I have interesting thought, you know, about Friday. You just told about Friday. And Kiran talked about the black color of the moon. For example, in the United States, they have the Black Fridays when all the um, shops are having some big, you know, low, low low prices to sell everything. So mm-hmm. Friday is the Venus, and we have black color of the moon on the Venus. It's, it means the malefic aspects of that, and people are going there just like full of that instinct and just like losing everything just to order in order to buy stuff. And so yeah. it's also again just the yeah. love of consumption. Yeah, Friday. yeah, the, why, the why cons- Friday? yeah, the the consumers, which comes from Saturn, who was the consumer because he he consumed his own children, just as our modern society and education consumes its own children, consumes all of our time, and that's why Black Friday is about all about the consumers, essentially, you know, um, going out and you know competing like with each other. You know, beating each other, dead, literally killing each other. People are dying in these Black Friday lines, waiting in line to to get uh, low prices on these consumptive goods, and they're literally trampling each other and killing each. Employees are are being killed, and the customers are being killed. The consumers are being killed. You know, that's why it's Black Friday because it's the day of death. It's the day that <clears throat> you know our soul is consumed by material goods by materialism and you know it's funny that you bring that you brought that up and it fit perfectly into what we were talking about because i've been thinking about that for the past week as you know we just had black friday here so crazy walmart black friday fight for tv police had to be called in on the scene to break up a fight over a discounted flat screen television at an unidentified walmart the sight is unbelievable as a woman still tries to hold the box TV all the while being thrown to the floor and restrained by two cops. Black Friday shoppers trampled at the Target store. When the doors opened at a North Buffalo Target store at 4 a.m. Friday morning, the crowd waiting outside turned into a chaotic mob. We can hear a man yelling bloody murder for help. Once he escapes the entrapment of the stampede, we can see the amount of pain he had to endure beneath the soles of everyone's shoes. The Del Amo Fashion Center balloon disaster. In 2006, the Del Amo Fashion Center in Torrance dropped 500 gift certificate balloons down to the ground floor towards the unexpected 2,000 savage people. As you can imagine, The one in four chance of actually catching a balloon caused a wave of injuries resulting in a senior citizen being treated for critical injuries in hospital. Pregnant woman knocked to the floor. In 2005 in Grand Rapids, Michigan, the pregnant woman was knocked to the floor by a mad dash of people at 5 a.m. at Walmart. A 13-year-old girl who tried to help had to be brought to the hospital for injuries. All for this did the doors open with pure body force five minutes before scheduled opening time. Two men killed in gun battle between Toys R Us shoppers. In 2008, Toys R Us in Palm Desert, California, two men had gotten in an argument after both of their wives had been fighting as well. Both men took out their guns and shot each other dead in a standoff. So I was thinking about that. I mean, it's <clears throat> it's black is the color of death. We all, we wear black at at funerals because it's the color of death, which is Saturn. Saturn is the god of time. He's he's the grim reaper. He's the <clears throat> the harvester at the end of the season, which is the keeper of de- the death of the season. He is there to reap what has been sown at the death of the season. So that's why his color is black. He's always shown with the black hood. He's He's the crypt keeper, essentially. So that's why Black Friday is the day of death, where we consume, we are, our soul is consumed by material, you know, materialism. Yeah, These, just look at the word materialism. You have Mata in there, which is the mother, which is Venus again. Exactly. You know, uh, Madonna, um, with her song, Material Girl, she was obviously, like so many in, in Hollywood, are being glorified into this role of the moon goddess 
and basically sacrificed at some point. Yeah. 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 She, she, oh, she was a material girl. Well, I, I mean, I don't know, but, <laughs> but yeah, that goes back to the, to the, you know, you mentioned Christina, the different aspects and the phases of the moon, you know, there's, there's the white moon, the silver moon, and then there, you know, then you have the black moon as Christopher Lord calls it the black moon of death because it's, it's the black moon Lilith. It's, it's the black the the portion when you know the moon has died we can't see it so it's the black moon so it's and then the the silver moon the the white moon is and these go back to the ancient to the different aspects of the goddess Isis who was also a a, a lunar she was a, a lunar cow goddess which is why she wore the bullhorns <clears throat> and she was yeah. so she all she was also a moon goddess a lunar cow goddess which is I mean, why the cow jumps over the moon and why, you know, it's why it's called a moon. And I mean, where we get the Milky Way from the mother of the Ma, which, you know, goes back to the those roots. And so so there was the, the white aspect of Isis and then there was also the black aspect of Isis. So she was both light and she had both light and dark aspects to her. Mm. Mm -hmm. Just like the moon, two sides. Yeah, exactly. Du uh, du uh, duality, uh, dual phases, the light and the dark. The moon and the lone star Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy in the sky with diamonds. Yep. It's funny because like, as I was breaking down those words, all the pieces just started falling in there. Just, I mean, how, how you know, the name Zorin, which I've been seeing over and I've been seeing so many Zorins. Since like since Zoran actually told me what his name means, how it means dawn in Slavic, you know, then I've been seeing tons of people that have that same name, like since I found that out. And I've been paying attention. So I you know, it it all just fell into place with the aster and the asterisk and the moon star, the monster, the moon star, the asterisk. The moonarchy. Uh, yeah, the moonarchy, the arch of the moon. You know the arc, the archangels, the seven lights, the seven rays, which are the you know the seven rays of of light, which are the archangels, which, you know, as we were talking, <clears throat> we touched on earlier, the archangels, we draw, you know, it's it's the square and the compass. The compass draws arcs, or arches, and the square draws angles. So it's the archangels, the square and the compass. Square and the circle. Squaring the circle. Exactly. All aspects of of astrology. You have we have squares and we have trines. And obviously the square is, you know, it's a it's a it's a limiting angle because if we think in terms of energy, you know, that energy comes to that ninety degree angle and it stops. It has nowhere else to flow. It it hits it. Like if we think of energy flowing like water, that water is going to hit that right angle and just smash and you know lose all its momentum. But in a trine, it just bounces right off, like in a game of pool. The you know, that momentum. That, that momentum, yeah. The 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 mo the momentum of being in the moment. The momentum. Yeah, the moon and, mind. And what was it? Zor Zoran had a, a brilliant piece that said that the U-M, um, in, uh, in Slavic means mind, which is, which is funny because, you know, that goes back to the ancient moon god men, which is where we get the word mind comes from and mental comes from the men of the moon, which is why men, men's, mentis, mind all mean the state of, which is the state of mind. And so that I mean that's perfect. I mean it just shows how the pre, the the U M um means mind in Slavic. So and then you have words like aluminum mm -hmm. and you know, momentum, which is yeah. the moment of the of mind, the moment of mind, the momentum. Yes, you talked about the word men. You know, first pharaoh in Egypt was called men. So it says a lot. Ah, exactly. But yeah, I mean, 
once we start breaking down these words, they we see the all the pieces and all the different languages come together once we break it apart. Yeah, we were just talking earlier about uh, just because we were saying "ment" and we were with these "ment" words, when we break those apart, we get fragments. And you said fragments comes from come from uh, French "frangère," which means to break. Uh, which is funny because when I look at the German word for question, it's Frage, which has the fragment in there, the fragmented mind. When you ask a question, the mind is boggled. You know, it's it's literally broken. And now you have to scramble to put it back together, the fragments. Yeah, exactly. You know, as, as we were saying earlier, <clears throat> it's the fragmenting of the... Uh, it, it's the symbol on the cover of, you know, of, um, what is it? Uh, what's, I forget the name of the band. Uh, Pink Floyd It's the symbol on the Pink Floyd cover of the dark side of the moon with the, the, the prism and the, the one light, the one still universe, still universal magnetic light, as Walter Russell puts it, the still magnetic light, the one, the unified one, the, the, Uninter the undivided, undifferentiated magnetic white light gets gets refracted through the prism of our own minds. We are the prism. Our mind is the prism. We are the the prism that 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 receives that universal undifferentiated white light, which is all information. Which everything is made of. Everything is just coded information even physical matter and it's it's when we when we perceive that when we experience that through this physical body which is a receptacle of that universal <clears throat> magnetic white light to experience itself in a differentiated state so the magnetic light is fragmented through us it is it is broken apart through us into multiple different perspectives of itself so, so what it is, is it's the white light being refracted into the seven rays. It's separ, separé. It's separating each, uh, the universal one into a universal many. Into, uh, it, from the one comes from many, one. I forget that, that, that um, Masonic Latin phrase, but it is from many, one. What is it? And <clears throat> I forget uh, the actual phrase in Latin. But yeah, it's but yeah, I had no I see I didn't even realize what that phrase meant until just now. I was like, oh, that's what it means. From many, one. Or you know, and from one also many. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a it's a contradiction. It, it's a paradox. It goes both ways. The same from, as alone and all one, the same. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Alone, all one. <clears throat> because we all we all are we're all, all we're all one in all is within us. We contain all, right. and all is contained within the one. Right, and when you're alone and you're meditating, you can almost grasp the whole of it, and you can almost mm -hmm. see when you're alone how, is, how everything is all one. Yes, remember the Buddha story, how he reached his enlightenment. He just completely lost everything, just went alone uh, under the tree, and just only then he reached that enlightenment and the understanding of the universe. And first of all, about himself, only being after alone. Because before that, he were in many groups with other people and, you know, just trying to do some different exercises, different philosophies, and only being alone, he just conquered all his demons and became all one. Demons, <clears throat> another uh, demon from the moon, the moon, like the moon stars, the demons. Mm -hmm. Deities, deities of the moon. Mm -hmm. the, the day, the downward decline of descent into the demonic realm of the underworld, which is the death, the death, the degrade, the decline of the season. When the summer declines, it dies into the winter season. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's not <clears throat> all of these dark, black, shadowy, aspects are nothing to fear i mean that's what they want us is to be afraid of the dark to be afraid of the underworld where 
all the secrets are kept. Yes, and the word dark, which, what means D and arc. D is like a pyramid, if we would see at the, at the letter how it looks like, uh, which has a fire in the middle, because pyramid is fire in the middle, and we have arc. So it means we have the fire in the middle, the pyramid, which opens that arc. So through darkness, we can go and see it light, because we have the opposite. Exactly. And of course, the light shines into the dark, and that's what gives birth to life, is that spark. Is that, that spark. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yes. that letter D is also as a prism, because when light goes through the prism, we have the other seven spectrum of the other colors. So it's actually saying that the word dark, it really is the opening of the gates of the arc with the colors of the prism. Mm -hmm. It's... Uh... Yeah, I was thinking about that, and I wrote something down a while back, uh, how that spirit, um, that light, descends into the water or matter, um, and from there on, binds to earth through water, right? Then ascends again and sets the matter free and takes the water. Uh, now your body is almost 80% water, so the fire, fiery spirit must go through the air, which is mind, to water, matter, which is the body. So that's the interconnected sexual divine unity of male and female that it passes through on its way to the Red Sea, the blood, mm -hmm. um, to manifest in matter. So, so there it is, you know, through love, through love, through that unity. Mm -hmm. The fire descends into into the matter, water, body, and uh, just look at the just look at the alphabet from A to Z, from head to toe. Uh, if you line up the the alphabet on the the twenty six letters uh, from 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 head to toe, it works that way too. In German, our um, word for toe is is C, which is Z E H. <laughs> you know, head mm -hmm. to toe, the Z from A to Z, same thing. Mm -hmm. And if you lined it up on the body, the alphabet, you get A, B at the top to M, N in the middle. And that spells abdomen, mm -hmm. right? From that, ab to M, N, abdomen. That, that and, reminds me of the ab. Being, being, you know, the Ab being the father, and obviously the Ab being the father is also the head, or Aries, which is the Abba, it's the Abraham, the, the ram, you know, <clears throat> the ram, of which is Aries, the head. So that's why the, the Ab, the A and the B would, of course, be at the head. Mm -hmm. And then down to the toe, where the water, your body connects to the earth. Soil mm -hmm. where you ground it. Very nice. Just drop some thoughts, you know. Yeah. Have you, do do you remember the the story of the Carlos Castaneda and how he thought about the four stages of the knowledge man? He told that the first stage one has to go through is fear, and if one conquers that and he will you know embrace that and he will go to another stage will be clarity, and he also has to embrace that as well and you go above that, and then he will go to strength. And if you, he will be able to embrace even that, he will have to go to the other, the fourth stage, which is uh, the old ages, when a person becomes old, and you have to go through that and also embrace that. And only by embracing all those four stages, you are able to become the full, you know, knowledge man. And also those four stages can be also thought as four elements. For example, fear could be water, because it's just like, like a fluid you are feeling, it's like an energy because if someone is fearing, you feel the solar plexus area just like shrinking all the time. The other is clarity, is air because air is always associated with clear mind and and knowledge. Strength could be fire and the old ages could be air because you have to air all those three, three strength, clarity and strength or water, air and fire into air. And only by everything all that, what you learn, you can become a real knowledge man. It's so allegorical. Because now I just see. What do you think about that? Holy crap. I can't believe that I haven't heard that before. So that's that's from Carlos Castaneda. 
that yeah. said, and he that's literally said, book. he literally said that there's four stages. Yeah. That's that's so. Oh my God! I'm having this major. And also, that could be the four phases of the moon, etc. So just like it's all about energy talk. It's not like like you know literal things. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's I'm having such a profound moment of synchronicity right now since you said that because literally at the beginning of this year, I wrote a little article that just kind of came to me out of nowhere. I'm not sure where the inspiration came from. But I just I also decided that there was four stages of truth. And so I wrote this article called The Bridges Through the Quadrivium of Truth, being the quadrivium, which is number, geometry, music, and heaven. And how I I I saw this, you know, I saw it as the four stages being the different levels of the brain. Of course, there are three segments to the brain, but if we break it down to like you know the num- the first stage would be the lowest portion or the the cerebellum the the pons which is the reptilian portion of the brain and then we go from there to you know the stage 2 which is the the midbrain and then we go to stage 3 which you know is obviously the the neocortex the cognitive function but you know i i had four stages so i mean it's so just like the highest point is i guess like the unification of those three and yeah. I, the way I labeled them out was, you know, the way I saw them in my own mind was depending on a person's level of mental slash spiritual fortitude or awareness. Number stage one, the lo- the first stage is the truth will scare the shit out of you, or cognitive mm-hmm. di- cognitive dissonance, or like a form of psychotic shock. From it's like a it's like a system overload. You know, it's like too much information given all at once can you know like blow your mind literally mm-hmm. it'll you know it'll like cause you to go into like a like a, a short you'll you you will short circuit from too much yeah. information so that's that's where you were talking about the fear as the fear response which of course because the first level is the reptilian portion of the brain which is about fear it's the response to fight or flight the survival mechanism of our physiology and then when we go upgrade to you know the next stage, stage two, I saw as the truth hurts, or being you know an emotional reaction, being like it, it challenges your your true beliefs so much that it, it I mean you feel we feel hurt mm-hmm. or disappointed that we've been lied to or that we've been you know how could everything we knew we thought to be true be proven to have been a lie? I mean that hurts. Yes. I mean, and, and so the next level is, is the truth shall set you free. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's like spiritual union. It's free thinking. It's the level of radical individuality where we start to break out of the conformity and the slumber. We start to, we start to swim up this, you know, swim upstream while the rest are floating downstream. We start to go against the mainstream of traffic, the mainstream of thought, the, the main, the, major consensus with everybody else with with the herd with the flock yeah and Mm -hmm. and then stage and then stage four the last stage to me in my opinion is where we can see all things as a joke i mean truth becomes hilarious when you see things as they really are it's it's we see them for the joke that it is it's like you know it's that's where we are the comedian Mm -hmm. we're we are the serious yeah exactly i mean yeah I mean, it becomes, especially looking at the mainstream news now, like it's all just a big giant joke. It's like a, a, a dog and pony show, you know, which is what politics are, which is why they're donkeys and elephants, because it's a circus. They're trying to tell us these things. It's all a circus. Mm-hmm. If your email inbox is out of control and you've given up sorting it out, a Baltimore company thinks it has a solution for you. Could this be the end of email overload? 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 Could this be the end of email overload?
Could this be the end of email overlord? Overload, rather? Third time I've said that. I'll probably say it three more times, see? In my line of work, you got to keep repeating things over and over and over again for the truth to sink in. To kind of catapult the propaganda. Yes. Yeah. And also Don Juan says to Carlos that not all of the people are even willing to go through all those stages to, you know, earth all those, you know, in, in yourself. Some of them are, you know, are trapped in fear, for example, or they choose to, to stay in fear or someone just going to clarity stage and they are just embracing that clarity and they're so like that that they don't even want to go further. So just staying there, others go to strength and, you know, leave everything and stay to that death mode and etc. So just it's such a variety in this life is so just breathtaking and not all the people have to you know embrace all those four elements in, in our bodies but if one does it just like really eliminates everything mm -hmm. um the word radical uh that you said in the third stage there we are going back to the roots to find your your truth again uh radical come comes from radix which means the root and another interesting hint what the root really is uh when you take the word rad r uh, r a d and you look at that in german that means wheel so mm -hmm. the wheel is the root and radical also ratio comes from that word as well ratio is also part of the wheel yep yeah that's interesting and that, just hearing y'all break down break that down makes me think you know the ratio um you know makes me obviously think uh ra and tio in spanish means grandfather tio so it would be you know it's like you know the 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 wise grandfather Grandpa's you know of light and that yeah. means also god mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yeah exactly yeah in greek theos or you know it's it's but it, but of course if you pronounced it you know in certain dialects it would be teo teos or teo mm -hmm. you know so it's all in the phonetics and and the words themselves i mean it just when we start to break them down we can decipher so many other different under but of course um this goes back to what we were talking about earlier was I was getting to the difference between the ESO and the EXO, which will separate so many people who are brilliant in their, in their specific field of study. But the reason they can't draw these bridges over that chasm, over the gap of cognitive dissonance, they can't draw the bridge into the esoteric realm because, they, because they've been fragmented and they're compartmentalized into their one unique one specific uh specific speci special speciality of area of study which is you know it's there are many different aspects of science and and study many different fields of study and we have to be able to cross reference from different fields of study and syncretize them all together or else we're never going to see the connections between all of it which is the whole problem of mainstream science today is because as Rupert Sheldrake says, you know, the, the sciences are compartmentalized. They're not designed to where they cross-reference each other and they actually combine to prove each other correct. Because mm -hmm. all the areas, all the different aspects are, are, have been fragmented, broken apart into separate areas of study. When we unify the mind, we, get, we see that all of these areas of study back each other up and they reinforce each other. It, it's it's syncretism. It is reconciliation of differing beliefs, which is com so. This is why most um, mainstream, uh, very ed very well educated, scholarly, esoteric, or, or sorry, exoteric um, etymologists and things like that, and linguists, they will completely. I mean, they will completely miss this whole aspect of breaking words down and mm -hmm. see different meanings in them because. They are simply not well studied in theology and mythology, 
because that is specifically the the connection that draws the links between etymology and and theology and astro theology is having a well versed background in in different mythologies and different theologies and these different areas of science that are all reconciled together through the science of syncretism which is the art of combining all of these different sciences and seeing how they connect mm-hmm. and that's i mean that's why it's just so separating is because you know we've been fragmented and you know separated mm-hmm. separate and and we're being taught to compartmentalize our feelings uh and and create that division uh and and we're being told that you can deal with a by com, uh, compartmentalizing you can deal with a small with many smaller problems better than with one big one which is you know it's kind of strange but that's how that's how science seems to be teaching us uh, or attempting you know science is mostly looking uh at the differences rather than what we all have in common which when you actually look at it we have way more things in common than not uh even if you look at the animal kingdom yeah yeah exactly sorry i muted out there but um yep that's exactly right i mean <clears throat> it's all about yeah we there are more connections to everything than there are differences that's the only and the only, what's what is able to perceive those different connections is is a, a, an active and fully functioning right hemisphere because that sees the the macro while the left hemisphere focuses on the micro it focuses on like you said it's it's focusing on the little details the honing in on a specific part of science and just only studying that mm. rather than which is only left brain that is purely just left brain rational thinking and linear logic and understanding and so this is where all of these de debu- quote unquote debunker sites because they're not actually they're they're professional debunkers their job is to label things that are actively being studied through the scientific method but their job is to label it as pseudoscience because it goes against everything that you know that either has been taught in school or things that literally most people just aren't able to see the connections and the validity of it because they're thinking specifically in a linear logical rational reasoning perspective which is which is very essential but that's not that's only one half if we're only doing that type of thinking then we're completely missing the big picture mm-hmm. completely zoomed in on the one little details rather than zooming out and seeing how they all connect it's mm-hmm. literally if someone's profession is to literally if people consider themselves a debunker or you know or all of these skeptic websites this, man this is where uh, i i really have a strong a strong um a strong feeling for is especially like rupert sheldrake is there's all these skept literally skeptic websites websites that are dedicated specifically to skepticism mm-hmm. so a healthy skepticism is what we need but when we are locked into that left brain and thinking and considering ourselves uh, labeling ourselves as a oh i'm a skeptic no i don't believe i don't believe any of that sh- i don't believe astrology that's all pseudoscience because i'm a, i'm a rational thinker i'm a skeptic mm. well, you know they're denying they're literally keeping themselves in a prison of the mind as mark passio says when i mean they're denying the left and uh, thomas sheridan had a brilliant article breaking down the psychology of skepticism of of i mean i mean like hardcore skepticism which is being literally it's locking ourselves into the left brain it's fragmenting our own mind and what what that does is the left brain will literally over it'll dominate the right hemisphere which is the feminine aspect it's so it's the male dominator mentality that is dominating that feminine aspect of of our of their own mind so they're only ac- accept acknowledging the masculine aspect of themselves mm-hmm. which is the linear objective analytical rational reasoning 
all of these words are considered are considered um, compliments. I mean, these are considered good mm-hmm. things, good qualities to have, and they are, but they're not the only things that we need. Like it's, I mean, we also need to see things on a larger. We need yes. to that, that right brain connects all of these things, all of these dots together. Yes. You just brought some very fascinating thoughts. I just don't, I'm not sure I will be able to express them now, but just, for example, it's very interesting when we are trying to trace back when all that uh, polarity starts, because, you know, for example, we have uh, mother and father, and those two polarities, like female and male, black and, and red, not the black and red, and, but blue and, and red, they are having a baby, for example, and that baby is not a polarized, it's just neutral. It's just like a sun from those two polarities. And when all starts, just like from some, when, when child becomes older and older, he starts to go to the other one side of those two things, rather, uh, either mother or father, for example. And that all the polarity starts. So just like, interesting, when do all that occurs? And so what's uh, something like that, I don't know. Which shows that it's a cycle, you know, we, we can't yes. look at certain things in history and try to pinpoint where something started, just mm-hmm. like uh, in our talk with Santos about Noah, we, we realized that it's really uh, a spiral, a cyclic uh, event that comes that comes again and again every time, you know, for example, a new life is born. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it's, it's perfect that you mentioned that. Again, that was one of the key note words that I had written down to discuss to discuss was um <clears throat> the spiral the the spirael the the spire of ra the the and of course the the symbol of the spiral i mean it's if we think about it it's it's like <clears throat> it, it's the vortex and what i was thinking about the other day was when i was thinking about this concept about the spiral and the word itself and all the root words that it that it shares being um the the spire the the s pyre you know the the which has the is the root word for spirit and for and for aspire and for all of these other and spirit um or to spear it like um like a verb to spear something to spear mm-hmm. it and um and so, yeah, they, they all, in my mind, come back to the spiral and, and the spire, and which is, I mean, it's it's the pillar. It's the pillar of fire. The pillar of fire, the, the spirit fire okay. of God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, like the birthday candles. It's the spire. Right, and that reminds me of Athena, um, who shook the spear into the face of the dragon of ignorance, and that's where we get spirit and shakespeare from exactly and um that was making me think of the spirit like like jesus was speared in the side with the spear of destiny and which which is ascent it's it's the ancient ritual of poking the holes in the sacrificial victim because in ancient in the these ancient rites especially in, in in also in freemasonry they have the right where they would poke the poke the vi- poke the victim with the with the swords and poke the holes to release its spirit, <clears throat> which is <clears throat> also I believe is what they did in bloodletting, which is why they would they would bloodlet was because they would poke the hole and let the spirit flow and let the the spirit have access to the, to the spirit. But um, it also makes me think of words you know root words like. Yeah, again, the spire, which is the S pyre, and the pyre is the pillar of fire. So, makes me think of words like inspire, <clears throat> being, and also again words like aspire, which is mm-hmm. the ass pyre. It's the pyre. It's the fire under your ass. When we aspire to something, we have a fire lit under our ass to achieve that thing. <clears throat> it's it's the the fiery spark that gets us going. It's we aspire to be something, so it's lighting the fire under our ass. It's the ass pyre. It's right. the pyre, and pyre when, under our ass. And then when you're inspired, you're standing in the flame, in the fire. You're standing in the spirit. Yes, that's, that's perfect. Mm-hmm. 
Exactly. Standing in the flame of, you know, it's in the, in, in the fire of the spirit, which is the knowing in a, the sign of Aquarius is the sign of, is, is spirit sign and an air sign, which is spirit. So it's in which and the motto for for Aquarius is I know. So it's an age of spiritual knowing as opposed to just watery believing as mm. in Pisces, you yes. know, which is, you know, we as Santos would say, believe in Jesus, brother <laughs> in the clouds, as opposed to knowing within an inner knowing. You know, and, and of course, when we say that, people will say, oh, I know Jesus. He, I talk to Jesus every day. I, he's, he's, in, he's in my heart. And it's, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's you. You are the, it's the, the that fire act. in your heart. And so many people are like, I talk, I've literally talked to Jesus. I have, <laughs> I have spoken to Jesus. And I'm like, well, yeah, but what you're speaking to is just a portion of your own consciousness. And they're like, no, it's Jesus. I'm like, it's a portion. No, it's a, it's a totality of your co- own consciousness, making you aware of its presence. And they're like, no, it's Jesus. <laughs> it's the spirit within you. The, the Christ lives with it. It's the Christ within you. And they're like, no, nope, it's Jesus. And I'm like, <laughs> he's a, he's out there. He's coming down in the clouds. Yes. It's external, you know. It's nothing internal. And they're like, but oh, but he's in my heart. But he's also out there in the clouds. Which I'm going to reveal to you today is the secret of the Christ within not without, the Christ in you, and that's this Christ. You see, there are 33 bones along here, and when you get to the last one, and you cross the medulla oblongata here in the bottom, at the bottom of the head, and here are the 12 cranial nerves. When you get to the 33rd bone where the Christ is crucified, it gets crucified at this cross here. See, this is the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve, is the nerve that goes through your body. It's vagrant. It just wanders around through the body, feeding the heart, the liver, the spleen, the kidneys, all the vital organs, and then it returns all the fluid back to the cerebrum. Aries, the ram, the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. In the book of Revelation, it mentions the Lamb of God 29 times. What have sheep got to do with salvation? And the most holiest of books, every chapter, there's only 22 chapters, 22 again, Revelation, because it's the 22 parts of the Kabbalistic tree. When you look properly, you will see it. We're going to do this now. Now we're going to do the we're going to do biochemistry now, mixed with astrotheology, to show how our body is below of what is above, and we're going to learn how we can use our body to ascend. Inside we ascend. If you're looking outside for ascension, waiting for a savior to come vicariously to save you, this is not going to happen. It never has. It never will. This beautiful sacred cerebrospinal oil, which produces our body, 
the cerebrospinal system, the first system in the body out of the 12 systems in the body that is fully developed. And the oil that comes from the claustrum, little closet, little cloister, just below the cerebrum, descends and, and comes down to the sacrum. Here we have the sacrum bone, the sacral bone. We're going to look at this in a minute. And it's a pump. It's a bone, five fused bones, and it pumps. And it pumps the oil back up. When the oil returns, we have illumination. We have entered the higher mind. And we are baptized in the Jordan, which starts in Orion. At the foot of Orion is a star called Regal, Rigel. And the river Eridanus goes all the way to the foot of Aquarius. From Orion, to, from Orion in Taurus to Aquarius. And Aquarius is the water bearer. And, and there is the river joining the two. And so this is where Jesus gets baptized when he is in the Eridanus, the Jordan, in, in, the, in the head, in the Garden of Eden. Remember, this is the head, heaven. Here is hell. Inferno. But here also is winter. Inverno. Here are the ten concentric rings as we descend from mind, from universal mind, knowing to universal mind thinking. We are now thinkers. And we have seven conditions, seven vices which we need to turn, seven virtues as we transmute learning to God. And as we ascend the ladder of Jacob and return to unconditioned consciousness, these seven planets, these seven chakras are nothing but condition. Our consciousness, which was unconditioned has been conditioned and we need to sublimate those energies change them change the polarity The divine mind sounds a 12 key diapason. Mind is 12, natural, material, matter is 7. And here again he explains his 12. 12 lights would therefore be the most apt symbol of the 12 basic powers of the divine intelligence. And this brings us back to the primal true designation of the 12 rays of genius in man. See, we have 12 cranial nerves. That's the Christ and his 12 apostles. And those nerves descend into the land of the Gentiles to witness and bear witness to the Gentiles to save them. Because from here...
which is called the cave of Brahma, where Brahma is dead for three days or Jesus is laid in a tomb for three days, then activation happens. The pineal gland is touched with this oil. The pineal gland already produces melatonin and dimethyltryptamine. It commences to produce something which is called the blood of the Christ. This is Christ turning water into wine. This is what in occult science is called the good wine. Finally, we have wine, not water, in our blood. And this blood of the Christ cleans the blood, purifies the blood, administers the 12 salts that we need, and we can live virtually forever if we do this process. This is um, the pituitary stalk. It's all there. They knew what they were doing. <coughs> Here's all the chakras. When you add the petals, 4, 6, 10, 12, 16, 96, you get 144. When you multiply it by the top crown chakra, 1,000, you get 144,000. Revelation 14, 1. And look, and I saw the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, Aries the Lamb, standing upon Mount Zion, and 144,000 singing the song of the Christ because we are all of the 144,000 if we return like the prodigal son back to his father's kingdom. In our culture, of course, they'll say you're crazy and you're blasphemous. And they'll either put you in jail or in a nut house. However, if you wake up in India and tell your friends and relatives, my goodness, I've just discovered that I am God, they'll laugh and say, oh, congratulations, at last you found out. I guess we could come to an end here. We've touched quite a bit of material here. Um, material mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, we've touched the mother goddess <clears throat> <laughs> that's always fun <laughs> <laughs> well all right colin uh this has been great um of course this this is not the end of it um this is going to be to be continued um so to speak I hope you'll this join us the, tomorrow. It's the we, end of the end of the beginning. <laughs> yep. I'll hope you join us uh, tomorrow when we talk to Zoran. Yeah, and definitely. We can just uh, you know continue what we've been doing here. So uh, thank you for being our guest on the show, and uh, we're looking forward for the next one. Awesome. Yeah, I'm glad we got to have this chat. So many good topics, so many good things to discuss about the discus mm -hmm. and so many other topics that it's good. It's so awesome to have, you know, a, a, a crew, a team that we can all bounce these ideas. And especially, you know, we're in the Trinity right now. There's you, me and Christina, and we're triangulating these ideas off of each other and in order to <clears throat> to gain greater perspective and understanding is through the reflection of our own uh perspectives off off of or onto each other so we're gaining understanding in that way which is my favorite thing to do is to literally just to be able to sit down and and discuss all of these all of these things and that's how i learn the mirror knowledge being as a mirror exactly i mean i learn about i learn these things for myself by number one actually actually discussing them myself yeah. and i learn even more about it when other people especially from different backgrounds and other countries you know they uh, so this that's what's so perfect is seeing all the different languages have some of the same you have all the same universal principles and they all essentially reaffirm they reaffirm and reinform each other 
by I mean by breaking down the roots is seeing that the roots lie within all of these different languages and which is they're all just sounds they're all just there's only a specific number of phonetic sounds that we can produce with with the tongue Mm -hmm. with the the lingam the the linguistics comes from the lingam which is the tongue and um so there's so the tongue can only produce a certain amount of sounds so regardless of what the sound is they all it's just that same sound even if it ha- even if we give these things different meanings different definitions the sound is one and the same so it it holds that universal vibratory pattern so it doesn't matter what what we interpret it as that's the objective reality is is the sound itself hmm. and then the subjective is how we, you know what we interpret from that hmm. that's why you become a cunning linguist when you're good with your tongue <laughs> a cunning linguist. <laughs> yep. And that's see see most people would just see that as just a dirty joke. But it's so much deeper than that. It's a deep, deep, deep that's that's why studying this esoteric path of of language is so is so insightful and so uh, I guess like addicting is because we we start to see all of these little you know all of these jokes and phrases like like for example you uh, oh what does assuming make make or what does that make me if you oh oh you assumed well that makes an ass of you and me hmm. is is an old phrase that i've heard you know that is assuming makes an ass of you and me because it contains the words ass you and me and you know it's all of these little jokes Man. Are act- actually hold so much truth inside them that that's why it's funny. And most people, you know, will just see it as an exoteric. You know, it's just a humorous little play on their play. Oh, that's word play. You're just playing on words. These are just puns. Yeah, but we we uh, uh, Christina and I we just brought out that slide uh, where we ask, you know, when did we divide between work and play? Because play uh, that comes from ply which means work. So play and plot, you know, work and, and play that was not divided once or doesn't have to be, you know, playful learning uh, as we have just established is so much easier for us to grasp. Exactly. You know? And yeah, uh, that's perfect. Right. When you said assume, uh, the same goes when we are consuming, it makes a con out of you and me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So perfect. Mm. It, it's just mind boggling how it always works out. Yeah. Little formulas that we can, you know, grasp and we can pick up on, which is like Christopher Lord, um, obviously, has pointed out one of the most profound ones, which is that prefix of the A B L E or the I B L E, which is the able, the, the, which is the bull. B L E is the bull. Yeah, so, I mean, right. These You're either tools. able or you are a coward, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, man. So, mm. <laughs> yeah, within, within the roots of the word, we start to see all the puns are more are so much deeper than just jokes. And people will make fun of this stuff because it is funny. Because when you see the truth, it becomes funny. And And most people, I mean, a lot of people will just laugh and say, you know, just brush it off as it, this is just wordplay. You know, you're just playing on words. These are just puns. Well, they are, but they are, there is so much deeper truth that, I mean, the, the truth goes underneath all of these puns and these jokes and these play on words are, are so profound that most people cannot grasp how deep it goes. And, in order to see why it's it, why it is that way, why these words in these phrases are are I mean are are so, actually so true that they, uh, they are true. I mean they're, that's why they're funny because it's tr- it's funny because it's true. Yeah, and they they don't grasp the depths of it because they're literally uh, using uh, are used to. Um, you know, compartmentalized to have it limited at some point, it needs to fit in a box, you know, uh, 
that's when when people say uh, step out uh, think outside the box you know that that's that's that decompartmentalization that enables you to be able to grasp the depth of 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 these dark waters mm. yeah it's like get your mind out of the cubicle and mm. you know into dive into the depths of the deep waters where it's it's diving through the deepest waters in order to access that that buried treasure, that treasure that lies at the at the at the sea floor, and in order to get that pearl, to get that pearl, we have to dive to the deepest waters to get it, and you know to bring up these these pearls uh, of insight, of inspiration. Mm -hmm. mm. And of course, the 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 deep waters are you know are represented as as the unconscious portion of our of our consciousness. It's the shadow aspect of ourselves, you know, diving into the depths of the unconscious in order to bring out these these pearls of of truth that are locked away in that you know in that uh, in that treasure box of the unconscious. Where and of course there's that that treasure is always guarded. That treasure is always guarded in the underworld by the Cerberus or by the dragon or by you know that that ego that is always guarded by the most powerful portion of the ego. Mm. So I mean that's that's why all these stories and movies and symbols are constantly having that repeat, repetitive theme of slaying the dragon and slaying, you know, slaying the demon, slaying our own demons, which is, you know, getting over the ego, getting past our own ourselves in order to find that the treasure that is hidden that is locked away in our own unconscious that we're constantly feeling the need to defend oh i gotta defend my ego that hurt i took that personally that hurt that hurt my feeling i gotta defend my ego i gotta defend my pride let me whip out my sword to, you know to because my ego is hurt you know mm. all, all the wars and all the all the you know different conflicts over just differing beliefs and differing theologies, different, different aspects of these, you know, same universal truths. <clears throat> For sure. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, let's continue this tomorrow. Uh, call it a day or a night for some of us. And uh, again, thanks, Colin. This was awesome. I have so much, so much more to touch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's always more to unravel, always more to, as Terrence McKenna said, we can try all we want, but we will never get to the bottom of this stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the further in we go, the more we uncover and the more there is to cover at that point, the more there is to, to touch on. I will see you guys in the next video. I rely solely on word of mouth and the recommended algorithms are not recommending any of my videos or films anymore. My channel has literally been completely restricted. So I rely on your help by sharing my work around if you appreciate it and uh, leave me your comments. I definitely want to know what you have to share and what you have to think about all of this stuff. And I will see you in the next video.